Hello everyone. Hope you are doing well. I thank you all those who ever asked or suggested some creative ideas about my last weekly address. Major questions were how the nanotechnology is feasible, toxicological point of view, and increased food nutritional quality. These are the major concerns were raised, and some some were also some general comments were also there like. Uh, why I started this weekly address on science and research topic? Who is your target audience? And is this to earn money directly or indirectly? And one more suggestion was to speak in Hindi language. Uh, I will keep trying to discuss all those concerns in my subsequent address one by one. Before coming to our subject today, let me address some common questions. First, why I started these weekly addresses? The answer is pretty simple in my mind. Being a research scholar, I usually participate in scientific meetings and crowds in such meetings have more or similar background of science and often common men or women are not a part of these meetings. If I simply ask some common questions like, why do you see sky blue? Why can't you see in the dark, whereas some animal can? Why legumes are rich in proteins and cereals are rich in carbohydrate? How is your cell phone screen touch work? Often you use this technology and we all use these technologies, but common men and women are not aware that what are the inventions and what are the phase of inventions uh, came through so that nowadays we are using these technologies. So overall what I want to say is we all use these inventions happened in the research laboratories but often we don't know the invention because common and women are not a part of this research and they just make their concept based on what they see on TV, television, newspaper or the, that particular product advertisement. Sometimes in the competition of TRP of media or sometimes due to self-interest common men and women get the wrong fact about any particular technology. And through such address, we research scholars decided to communicate our, re our invention and let you to decide what is right and wrong for you. I want to create a platform where such a knowledge gap and relationship of scientists, science and community can be bridged. Other thing, my target audience is entire, is entire community from curious students to their parents. I'm not interested to earn anything from this ad these addresses. They are and they will be freely available and it's my pleasure to give back something to society if I can. That's why I started. The next major question was, the general question was for the Hindi audience of, for the Asia region, in particular India, from where I belong to. Uh, from next time, I will start. I will start Hindi and English podcast alternatively. So the next week I will speak in Hindi, and the following week in the English. For the other languages in the other countries, I will keep trying to consult with some agencies, so and the software so that I can uh, translate the things and I can start to podcast in other languages of the different countries based on the regional languages. Okay. So let's talk about nanotechnology and food from the part we left last time. So nanoparticle, they are the tiny particles of less than 100 nanometer and this particle has potential to enter in a cell. That cell can be animal cell or the plant cell. And it is considered that these particles has more than 100 times faster penetration power than conventional bulk counterpart. So how so how that can help to increase the food nutrition and production that we discussed last time? So it may help by a variety of ways. For example, by using less amount or I can say the precise amount of the nutrients. If I use nanoparticle as a nutrient fertilizer and if I use less nutrient to feed my plant and plant get more nutrient because whatever I apply on plant, plant absorb those nutrients. then plant will grow faster than the than the plant grow with the conventional fertilizer if you heard 
the uh, the re- the recent program of Indian of the Indian Prime Minister Modi, uh, Mr. Modi, he also said that in his Man Ki Baat that feed less and get the maximum output. However, we know that this is a very very general statement that feed less and get the maximum output. But how we will get that? We will we will understand the things very systematically. In addition to these tiny particles can boost plant metabolism, plant photosynthesis rate, the absorption of the solar light by the plant leaves, and make the food for plant, and they increase the plant biomass. They increase the plant enzyme activities, which are involved in biosynthesis of several nutrients, which we require in our food. There are several nanoparticles nowadays they are using in the engineering and the solar cell production in the solar cell like titanium dioxide used for the solar cell they can boost the plant photosynthesis too and they and also there are several nanoparticles they can kill the plant pathogens that yields more and how they can do that we will understand these things because if we if we apply these uh, pesticides the insects get resistant and they sometimes they develop the superbug so how 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 can we can uh, overcome from these problems the nanotechnology has a solution for those so in the next talk we will discuss how can we synthesize and make these nanoparticles how they look like and then we will move forward for the application part of you so s- see you next time and i am looking forward to get your comments and questions as i said last year and all the vid- all the previous video if you if you didn't watch my last video you can see on the youtube of my channel and thank you god bless you see you next week